Thank you, Robbie. Can you hear me okay? Clear, yeah, thank you. Um, so we just want to say thank you for um, inviting us along to actually share our experience. Um, my name is Heather Fraser. And I'm, I'm Viv Mussel. And this morning we're actually going to take you through our journey in commissioning pharmacies to provide the NHS Health Check Programme. It's going to be an honest presentation, so it'll be warts and all on our successes and challenges that entails and continues. And I hope you find our experience um, both informative and helpful. Next slide, please. West Sussex is predominantly white British, apart from pockets such as Crawley, where there is a significant Asian community. The kind is seen as fairly affluent. However, within Crawley and along the coastal towns, there are areas of deprivation. Looking at the map, you'll actually see the coastal areas are more densely populated than the likes of Midhurst and Petworth, which are rural locations in the mid and north of the county. The rural parts of the county are challenging in terms of access and they face issues such as transport. The health tech programme, although nationally derived, requires local design in order to best fit coverage, capacity and delivery to the geography, demography and social economic characteristics of the population. Therefore, models of delivery will most likely differ from programme to programme. Our population size is around 850,000 and we border with Hampshire, Surrey, Brighton and East Sussex. And our eligible population cohort for health checks is approximately 255,000. When our programme started, West Sussex had 94 GP practices. However, with closures and mergers, this has now reduced our numbers to around 85. But alongside our GP practices, we have over 140 pharmacies who serve our population. Next slide. So why commission pharmacies? In 2012, we had around 75% of our GP practices and 10% of our pharmacies delivering the NHS Health Check Programme. We knew there were parts of West Sussex where communities were not being offered a check. The number of GP providers we had was good, but as we did not have all the GPs signed up, we did not have full coverage. GPs would also only serve those registered with them. Pharmacies, on the other hand, could offer opportunistic checks to anyone eligible. They could also see those eligible who worked in the county but lived elsewhere, or lived in the county but registered with a GP outside our border. Some groups of people proactively visit their pharmacy as part of their daily lives and access pharmacies where they would not generally go to their GP. Pharmacies had extended opening hours and could offer health checks outside of core hours, and they were already delivering PCT Commission services. Next slide. This map shows the locations of all our pharmacies and GPs. And you may just be able to see the little green dots on the map which represent our pharmacy locations. Some pharmacies are located in areas where there is no local GP practice providing health checks. So we needed them on board to help with coverage, access and capacity. They were already established and they were seen as a trusted provider by both general practice and the public. And the LPC made, also made it clear to us that pharmacies could deliver the programme. Next slide. So we started to build our capacity. Our policy was to contract any pharmacy willing to train and provide the health check programme. By 2013-14, we had a variety of pharmacy providers already delivering the programme, including pharmacy chains, some of which were in supermarkets and a couple of independents. We made links with pharmacy area managers where we could identify them. In collaboration with the Boots Regional Manager, we held Boots-specific training sessions over that summer. In September 2013-14, Boots came on in a big way, increasing our pharmacy provision to 45. This gave the programme significant high street presence across the county and provided access to checks in areas where previously provision had been limited or absent. Next slide. We started confidently. This graph shows the breakdown of our pharmacy delivery each month from 2012 through to 2014. In 2013, we were slow but steady, just getting off the ground. 
Remember, we only had 12 pharmacies, but in total they delivered 892 health checks between them. That wasn't a bad start. By March 2014, we had at least one pharmacy site delivering in each area of the county. It's visible on the graph from August onwards that the additional providers in the boot chain alongside our existing pharmacy providers enabled us to increase performance month on month. You will notice a spike in January's part, particularly March. This reflects the inconsistency in pharmacy reporting, where activity is not claimed throughout the year, but is what we call data dumped into March. Next slide. So we had a confident start, now we're in our golden years. By 14-15, our number of commissioned pharmacies had increased to over 50, and they were delivering just under 3,000 health checks between them, 2,802 to be precise. In 2015-16, although the numbers were still reasonable, we started to see a decline. Pharmacies delivered 2,322 health checks that year, which was quite a considerable drop on the previous year. But I guess we need to look at the whole picture. This was the year our budget took a hit, and we had a loss of resource. Throughout 14-15, we as commissioners had made regular visits to pharmacies, known by us and the team as Hug a Pharmacist, and we had an all-year round awareness-raising multimedia campaign, such as radio ads, ads on train gates, petrol pumps, all to push people towards their local pharmacy. But the loss of a post and budget in public health in 2015-16 meant we could no longer do this. We could no longer invest the same amount of time, effort, or resource advertising as we had in previous years. Interestingly though, the drop in advertising seemed to affect pharmacies more so than our GP providers. You can actually see this on the graph where it begins to impact our service. The blue line on the graph shows the decline from August onwards. And again, you'll still see that influx of activity data from January to March, our data dump. Next slide. Our early challenges and the creation of the Pharmacy Delivery Steering Group. There were some grumblings on the ground, so we gave, decided to give our pharmacies an operational voice. We established the Pharmacy Delivery Steering Group. The group consisted of representatives from all the chains and independents and highlighted the operational difficulties of day-to-day -day delivery. I'd like to stress, though, we only discussed day-to-day -day issues, not contractual ones. So one of our first challenges was, from them, the recording and reporting of activity. It was too cumbersome. Pharmacies had to upload their activity data to several different web portals back to the local authority to receive payment. The next challenge was our training. At this time, our training was over two days. Pharmacies felt they couldn't commit to that. Also, the training was alongside primary care staff, so felt that not everything in the session was relevant to them. Our third challenge, pharmacies mentioned that when we held any update training, they weren't able to attend as it was during the day. They would need to actually find cover for their pharmacy, which was actually at a cost to them. And lastly, our pharmacies find it difficult to recruit clients into the service. They find it difficult to make the service visible in store. There were restrictions on how they could market resources. For example, some pharmacies for some pharmacies, materials had to have their own branding and they were limited to the size of posters and displays they could put up in store. We were able to address some of their challenges and we did make some changes to help them. The reporting and recording system, unfortunately, was not one of those things we could change at that time as we would have had to invest in an IT system and we simply didn't have the funds. So this still remained a challenge for now. However, we did manage to split the training into pharmacy-specific training, and subsequently, we were able to reduce it to a day and a half. We also commissioned the online mentor program, which is an online update refresher training tool for all staff who deliver the program. This was free for them to use, and meant they could access the update refresher training at times that were suitable to them. We extended our marketing materials, so pharmacies could add their own messages and branding. Also, with the suggestions from pharmacies, we brought in shelf wobblers, prescription bags, stickers, and kind of display units. 
We allow now to pull up banners and all the marketing resources are free for them to use. Furthermore, we attended several LPC evening events to provide updates on the programme and feedback on their performance and outcomes. For example, females were more likely to access the service than men. The average age was 57 for both males and females, and almost half of those seen were classed as obese and referred for lifestyle advice. Next slide, please. So, here the shine comes off in 2016-2018. We thought we'd address their concerns, but as we've said, the decline began in August 2015, but in 1617 it became more acute. We now have 60 commission pharmacy providers who delivered less in a year than the original 12 pharmacies we had commissioned back in 2012-13. In total, that 1617, they delivered 855 checks between all of them. We asked ourselves, what more can we do to get pharmacy back on track? Fortunately, in 2017, we regained our original budget. So we went back to ramping up the advertising. In January 2017, we were able to address the IT issue and we commissioned Pharma Outcomes, the system pharmacies use on a day-to-day -day basis for other services to record and report their activity back to us. So we'd address that and they said that was much easier to use. In June 2017, we brought in a new member of staff who's a primary care liaison role and that enabled us to reignite our pharmacy visits uh, as we colloquially call them hugger pharmacist. We also reduced the pharmacy specific training to one day with a short two hour session on the point of care testing equipment the next day. We were able to do this by commissioning CPPE to deliver their training. The pharmacies sadly representatives struggled to continue to attend the pharmacy delivery steering group and so we disbanded this group with quite a heavy heart but we've always kept up our liaison meetings with the LPC. Some of the steps we took to address these issues were taken quite late in 1718. However, we were hopeful for an uplift in performance and we know they're capable of it. So we watched and we waited. Year-end figures haven't reflected our ambitions. By the end of 1718, they've delivered their lowest yet, which is 627 health checks. Interestingly, the supermarket model seems to struggle to perform the most. We've had a lot of supermarkets sign up, but only one is really successfully delivering this health check service. The smaller chains seem to continue to deliver reasonable numbers. Next slide, please. So what has changed in the last three years? Because we were at a loss, um, we've tried to address everything they've asked for, but why are they not performing? Well, the commercial environment for pharmacies, pharmacies is tough, we recognise this. Their operating means that trained staff in some of the larger chains are repeatedly moved on and we lose the expertise. There's competing products and services which have a higher income value than what we pay for health checks. There are campaigns for more lucrative things than health checks, such as travel vaccines, and often the staff are instructed to push those things that particular month. Some who've signed up to deliver the service just don't get the footfall to deliver the minimum of 12 health checks per year. And pharmacy sometimes don't realise the time commitment needed that a health check is 30 minutes, which is quite a chunk out of a busy pharmacy environment. And head office sometimes sign the local authority contract on behalf of uh, quite a number of sites. And some, some of the individual pharmacies in those chains have never seen the service specification, so they didn't actually know what they were supposed to be delivering. Next slide, please. So how are we responding to those changes? How are we going to address this? Well, we've acknowledged the current commercial environment pharmacies find themselves in, and we are changing our commissioning tax we're not just taking on any provider that's willing to provide it. We've audited all our existing pharmacy providers and we've used about 10 criteria markers, which we agreed with our LPC, and we've grad rated where they are against that criteria. We are now going forward with a pharmacy health equity audit. This has provided us with a very clear picture of where our good performers are located and where our pharmacies with no activity uh, are and in essence therefore we have no provision. 
We still need some of those that are red because they're in areas where we desperately need that provision. So we still need community capacity. Our GPs simply cannot deliver the number of health checks we required, even if we had them all signed up to do so and they worked like mad at it. We see pharmacy as an important component of our delivery model, but it has to be good value for the money and time we're investing. We train lots of pharmacy staff, but we find they are constantly on the move, so they're not able to take training back into the pharmacy and start delivering. And the cost of training is significant in setting up a provider site, and if no health check is delivered in return, that's not good value to the county council. All new providers are being asked for a short outline business case. How will your pharmacy meet the minimum requirement in the specification? Have you seen the specification? What's your population? Do you have the footfall? How will you market the service? How will you meet the demand? Do you have the capacity? We flexed our service specification to enable any member of the pharmacy team to train and deliver health checks if the pharmacist declares them competent to do so. Next slide, please. Yeah. We see the health champions and the requirements of the healthy living pharmacy level one and level two as a catalyst to rejuvenating pharmacy delivery. The earlier challenges we experienced, we feel, were around infrastructure and how we had set the system up. And we've made the changes we could. However, we feel the current day challenges are internal to pharmacy and it's for them to address. So is pharmacy worth it? Pharmacy have shown in the past they're capable of delivering really good numbers and when they deliver, they deliver really good quality health checks and we receive excellent feedback about them from people. So yes, they are worth it, but we are aware it takes a great deal to get pharmacies to deliver. They require significant investment of commissioner and contractor time and they need regular follow-up, and they need plenty of communication with. Promotion has always been variable across sites, but it's key, and the message to them is make the service visible. They can't just rely on us to push people towards them without advertising, and it's part of their service specification that they will promote it in store. Pharmacies need to be encouraged to use a whole systems approach for this and think more laterally. What else are they delivering within their pharmacy that they can promote health checks alongside? I.e. if they've got somebody coming in for a flu jab, ask them if they've had their health check, book them in. Are they delivering smoking cessation? If they haven't had their health check, book them in. We're looking for uh, furthering opportunities for codo delivery between GPs and pharmacies. We've had one pharmacy that has co-delivered alongside a GP for years, and they do a brilliant job. The GP simply invites people for a health check, and the pharmacy does all the health check delivery. We've just recently tra uh, trained a new pharmacy in Crawley, who is now linking with a large leisure centre, and they will both be promoting one another's service around health checks, physical activity, and so forth. The photo that we have on the slide here is from a promotional day we had in Worthing, and one of the local radio stations promoted the health checks on the radio, encouraging people to come down to the town centre and have their health check. Radio staff were also outside the pharmacy signing people up. All in all, the event was very successful. And it was made a success because the whole pharmacy team were involved that day and they thoroughly enjoyed it. So finally, I want to emphasize, but for us in West Sussex, we are fortunate enough to have an extremely proactive LPC and our, who we work very well with. And our joint aim is to have successful, good performing pharmacy providers. But it's a partnership and pharmacies have got to deliver to make the investment we're putting in worth it. So thank you for listening and we're happy to take any questions.